Yeah, White Ruck 85 back for our part six in our series introduction to whitetail deer hunting. We've come full circle and we're at the end. This will be our last section and it is deer down. Well, you did it. Whether it dropped in its tracks when you shot or you had to go track it for a while, you've harvested your first deer. Buck, doe, anything, it is a trophy. Absolutely. Well, now what do you do? You've gone up to it, you know it's expired, you have it, you see it on the ground, what do you do? Do you drag it out of the woods or do you, as what we call gutting, or remove the entrails uh, from the deer? I'll take pleasure in gutting you, boy. What's wrong with these people, huh? A couple schools on that. Most people go ahead and, and gut it right there. I will call it gutting because that's really what everybody calls it. Uh, I, I am in parties and I have been in parties uh, where they want you to take it to another spot to go ahead and do that. Uh, maybe because they don't want to kind of interfere with the area. They don't want coyotes or foxes uh, in that area where the deer are. So they ask to you to take it out, maybe take it to a parking area or something like that, and then go ahead and do the, the procedure itself. Either is fine, really depends on the party, who you're with, and uh, really how long your drag out is because you are going to make that deer considerably lighter when you take the entrails out. Now I can't really do a gutting procedure here on, on the series. Uh, one, it would take a little bit of time. Uh, two, it's in the late March, April time frame and uh, deer season is really over. So uh, I can't do one, but there's a lot of procedures either on the internet doing a Google search with pictures and it tells you how to do it or the actual procedure itself on YouTube. So go ahead and, and do a Google search on that and uh, that's really going to give you a, a good idea of what it entails. Uh, but hopefully you're with a friend uh, when you're out there hunting and they're going to be able to assist. And uh, you do it. You go ahead and do the procedure, uh, but the, the, let them walk you through it, let them talk you through it, let them give you a hand and show you, and then you know how to do it. Really only takes one or two times and uh, you become fairly competent at it. So it's, uh, uh, I just definitely go ahead and give it a, a go yourself. Now, some people say rinse it out with water once it's finished. Other people say wipe it out with a cloth. Uh, I've been doing the rinse with water for years and years and it really doesn't seem to spoil anything. Uh, that's really up to you on uh, which, which you want to do. Some people don't even do anything. They just go ahead and do the procedure and then take it straight to the butcher. Uh, if you want to save the heart and the liver, uh, you can certainly do that. Bring a plastic bag with you so when you're doing the procedure you can go ahead and, and place those two organs uh, into the plastic bag. Maybe have a cooler in your uh, car or truck. So you can preserve those. Uh, they are quite tasty. I've certainly had those before. So let's get that deer out of the woods. Having a sling in your pocket, basically all it is is a strap with a string attached to it and uh, tie it around the front legs. Bring that front legs up to the head, tie, tie in there, put that sling around your shoulder and go ahead and drag that thing out. Uh, snow and wet leaves certainly make it a lot easier. If you have a few people with you, uh, you can put it on one of those green or blue tarps and drag it out of the woods, help drag it out of the woods. That way it slides easier on the leaves uh, if they're not wet and it, and it keeps it nice and clean as you're taking it out of the woods. It kind of doesn't fill up with the, the leaves and sticks and things like that. Now, I don't advocate carrying uh, a deer out as shown in this picture, uh, hoisting up on the shoulders. First, I consider it really a safety issue. Uh, even if you have, say, put some orange around the, the deer itself or put something on the head, uh, orange on the head, uh, it's just really a safety issue. I don't recommend it. Uh, you're going to get covered with blood drips also. And uh, I, I, just don't, I just don't recommend it. Take it slow and easy. It can be very tiring if it's a heavy deer. No need for an injury, uh, either back or pulling a muscle, or worse, a heart attack. So just take it nice and easy, nice and slow, stop if you have to, get a, catch your breath, and then go ahead and continue your drag. And it might be a good idea, uh, 
to unload your gun, even if you have tags left, legal tags left to harvest another deer, go ahead and unload your rifle or shotgun. Uh, just in case, you never know, you may dra while you're dragging, you may slip and fall, and you don't want an accidental discharge, absolutely. So, so give, that, uh, give that some uh, thought there. You, you definitely want to unload your firearm. I know Pennsylvania, you only have one tag, uh, so you have to unload your gun as soon as you harvest your deer. A lot of people these days use four-wheelers to get those deer out of the woods. Always, always good to have a friend that has a four-wheeler. It makes it so easy. You go ahead and put it on the back and uh, just drive it right out of the woods makes it nice and easy. So if you have a friend, uh, certainly uh, get, go, go with them because it uh, really saves you, that's for sure. Uh, a deer cart, like pictured here, is great to, to have one, uh, to get one out of the woods. It's kind of just like almost like putting it in a wheelbarrow and, uh, and toting it out of the woods nice and easy. Now careful of ticks because they're going to start to come off the deer as the deer cools. Uh, they're going to start coming off of it, uh, make deer ticks, regular ticks. Uh, just make sure uh, that they're not getting on you and kind of like keep an eye out for them. Well, you made it back to your vehicle. So, so now what do you do? Take your pictures, record your hunt for prosperity. Always want to do that. I, I know I've not taken a couple pictures of mine in the past, really regretted it. And uh, everybody's got a camera with them now because it's in the phone and they're, they're pretty good cameras compared to those Instamatics that we used to take with us or even the old disposables. Uh, so start taking those pictures. Now there's a few rules, a few good rules for taking uh, quality deer pictures. I, and I really sometimes didn't follow them myself. But before any picture, always push the tongue back in the mouth. And when you harvest a deer and it expires, the tongue usually slides out of the mouth. Just push that right back in. It'll stay in there once you push it back in, but always get that tongue back in there. There have been quite a few great deer pictures that have been ruined uh, with the tongue hanging out. Now, there is Photoshop and you can kind of Photoshop that tongue out, but uh, just, just remember, uh, go ahead and push that back in. Try not to show the gutted area, the, the, the cut in the stomach area. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't look good and it kind of takes away from the trophy. Clean off any ex excess blood on the hide or the antlers, maybe around the nose or mouth area. Uh, get that deer on its stomach like it was bedding down and it's the best way to hide the cut and it makes it really look true to life. Sit behind the deer. Uh, have your cameraman level with you, not kind of up shooting down, but more level with you. Uh, if you have your camera on a tripod, get that tripod down low so it's nice and easy, with uh, nice and level with you and the deer. Uh, that really takes uh, better pictures that way. If you're in a deer camp and you won't be leaving for a few days and you have to hang that deer up to cool, you can either hang it head up by lashing it to the antlers and legs or down by using a deer hanger or gramble. And uh, now's the time, if you have to, open that stomach up with a stick, let that air get in there, cool that deer as rapidly as you can. Never wrap a fresh killed deer in plastic tarp. Uh, prevents heat and moisture from escaping. And only wrap it if it's completely cooled by hanging it overnight, whether, you know, if it's been below 40 or five degrees Celsius, uh, then maybe you can just cover it uh, if you know it's nice and cool, fine, but don't, certainly don't wrap a fresh killed because it's only going to end up spoiling. If you have a long trip home with that deer and it's kind of warm, you may, may want to wait till nightfall when it cools down a little bit and, and go ahead and take that deer home. Now pickup trucks are great. You can throw it in the back. It's going to stay nice and clean and dry. If you have an SUV or a car with a trailer hitch, you can get a car carrier as pictured here and put that deer on the back and uh, keep it out of the SUV, keep it out of the trunk, and it's, it's a good way to get it home. That's really that's what I do. And don't let those antlers rub on that car carrier or in the bed of the SUV. There's a lot of bumping and vibrations that go by. You can actually kind of ruin the look of uh, the piece that's, that's touching. Uh, so, so careful, maybe pull the head back or put something under those antlers uh, to go ahead and make sure that they don't get ruined. Now let's get that deer butchered. You can do it yourself, but most people take it to a deer butcher or processor. It can be a fancy place, 
uh, or it could be some good old boys uh, in the back of their house. That's kind of what I take mine to is, is just a guy as in the house. He's got some refrigerator units in the back and he sets that up in the fall and then goes ahead and does it and he does a pretty good job at it. You can get various cuts, burgers, roasts, ribs, deer jerky, deer bologna, breakfast sausage. Now I personally don't recommend adding any pork fat to your burger. They may ask you, do you want to add pork fat into your burger? I don't recommend it. I think it kind of takes away from the flavor and you can do that later if you want by adding sausage or some, uh, some beef fat, which is very good in with the uh, deer, with the hamburger. Uh, so go ahead and do that. Uh, now that's only my recommendation. You're certainly up to you, whatever you'd like to do. The butcher will normally show you uh, a list of available cuts and ask you what you'd like. Uh, price range uh, for me can be from about $50 up. Really depends on how fancy you get. Do you get deer bologna? Do you get uh, deer jerky? Do you get breakfast sausages? Things like that. It can it can end up being fairly pricey up in like 150 range if you get a lot of uh, those products. Uh, myself, I usually get the back straps, fillets, and burger, and that's it. Costs me usually around fifty dollars or so. If the deer has antlers, regardless what size, the butcher is going to ask you what you want to do with them. If you just want the antlers themselves and you're not going to do a mount, he'll do what's called a cap for you there. He'll cut the antlers, uh, it'll be together on the skull plate, and he'll go ahead and give those to you right there. Uh, if you want to mount your deer, like a shoulder mount type, um, most likely you're going to have to come back. You're going to tell him, hey, I want a shoulder mount. He'll say, okay, come back in a day and I'll go ahead and have uh, the head and, and for you. Now the various types of ways to preserve your trophy, uh, of course with that full mount, uh, or you could do the cap uh, mounted on a board as I do uh, with the hair on. I like it with the hair on, some people don't. You can boil that hair off if you'd like and just have it a skull cap. You can cover that with velvet if you'd like. Uh, or you can do the Euro look uh, with, the, with the whole skull, uh, you know, basically all the way boiled out, all the way down to bone. And, uh, and the antlers. That's really up to you, whatever you like, however you want to preserve your trophy. You just want to cut the antlers off, uh, you know, both of them, and maybe put them on your mantle uh, some, some way. You can see, you really, it's up to you what you want to do with your, uh, with your trophy. Butcher will normally keep the hide as part of the processing price, but if you'd like it, uh, you can certainly ask him for it. You can take it to a taxidermist, you can get it tanned, uh, you can put that on the wall, you can have it hair on, hair off, if you get it with the hair off and you, you like to make projects, uh, things like that, you can go ahead and make that with the deer skin. Uh, it comes out quite nice. Well, that about wraps up the series. I hope you got some basic skills out of this, what you need to be successful in the woods. Go ahead and get yourself a mentor if you can. Shh, be very quiet. I'm hunting. That's who's going to help you get started. Uh, I know they're not going to mind answering all kinds of questions and they're going to really enjoy recalling stories of days gone by of out in the woods of what happened to them, the deer they got, the deer that got away, the deer that took them two or three years to actually finally harvest. They'll love telling those stories to you and uh, I, I definitely recommend uh, the, the mentorship. Now they say hunting deer is part luck and part skill. Uh, when you start out, it's going to be more luck. You're going to kind of get lucky. And as you grow and as you learn, the skill piece is going to take over and it's going to become more skill on harvesting that deer. Always need lady luck on your side, always need that. But uh, you'll, you'll find out uh, as that skill part takes over, you'll see more deer, you'll recognize more deer in the woods. They may be doe and you're hunting for a buck, but all of a sudden you'll look and look and You'll, you'll pick out a deer that you would never would have saw a year ago. So you'll learn, you'll enjoy, have a great time out there, good luck to you. Uh, I've really enjoyed doing, putting this series together, it's been fun for me. So this is White Rook 85 signing out today from Killens Pond State Park, uh, Central Delaware. Everybody have a good one. <laughs>